Uh, the U.S. and Japan have reached a $7 billion trade deal. President Trump announced the outline of the agreement yesterday at a signing ceremony with the Japanese Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe. For uh, more on U.S. trade, let's welcome Senator Tom Cotton, Republican of Arkansas. Uh, Senator, it's great to have you. Don't Thanks. Look, don't, don't, I don't, can you see to my left? No, it's not. You can't really see it. But there's also a big elephant in the room that we may need, <laughs> we may need to talk about, Senator. But let's, uh, you're here to talk about trade. Let's talk trade uh, at the start. How was that deal yesterday? Obviously a positive uh, uh, with Japan at this point. But it just makes me wonder, does that make us more or less likely to, to, uh, uh, to coddle China and get something done? Well, first, I think the trade agreement announced with Japan was a big win for Americans. In Arkansas, in particular, we're very excited about Japan finally lowering barriers on beef, pork, and poultry. I also think the new U.S.-Japan agreement could be a gold standard for digital goods, you know, the transmission of videos, books, music, what have you, between our two nations. And I actually think that the agreement will have the happy effect of putting us uh, now uh, in lockstep with Japan to try to get better trade terms with China. Uh, as we put more and more of these trade deals to bed, a couple years ago with South Korea, now it's Japan, hopefully later this year it will be Mexico and Canada. That brings us our focus more intensely on China, which really is the worst cult culprit in the international trading system. So let's keep talking about trade, but just with, through the prism of what we've seen in the last couple of days. Um, in your view, uh, the, the, the latest uh, salvo in the... Um, um, you know, getting rid of Trump, I mean, the latest salvo is based on Ukraine. Does that make it more or less likely that he, he decides to do a trade deal with China? I don't know if it makes it more or less likely he's going to do a trade deal with China, given what the House Democrats are doing. I, I think what the president wants to do is get a good deal for America's workers, for our factories, for our farmers, for our ranchers with China. And he wants China to obey the rules of civilized nation when it comes right. to respecting property, property rights, not trying to steal technology and use it for military or intelligence purposes. The president's focus is, as it should be, on getting that good trade deal with China, no matter what kind of hysterics yeah. you see in the House of Representatives. But you've been in, uh, in Washington for a while, and you know everything gets political. So you don't think this, uh, none of this other stuff has, will have any uh, effect whatsoever. How, how about USMCA? Is, is it possible we get that done? It, with this as a backdrop, impeachment as a backdrop? I, I hope so. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has said all along that she wants to pass the Mexico-Canada agreement. Bob Lighthizer, our trade representative, has been working in good faith with her for many months to give assurances to her and some Democrats in her caucus about enforcement mechanisms. I think Republicans in the Senate could live with those measures. I know Donald Trump could as well. Unfortunately, the House Democrats have been trying to impeach Donald Trump since the day he was sworn into office. I think they voted three times already on impeachment. Uh, I hope that they'll focus on doing the people's business, one important part of which is passing this Mexico-Canada agreement. Yes. Um, just to get, to get down and dirty, the, the, you would, the, the uh, Democrats would need 20 senators, I think, if they had all their own senators uh, to go, if it does proceed to that level. Um, do you think that from what you know, from what you heard yesterday in the transcript, and I don't know what's going to come out with the whistleblower necessarily, do you think that this rises to the level of a high crime and, and, and warrants um, removal from office? No, you know, it, it's a little mystifying to me, and I think most Americans now that they've read the transcript of the president's call with the president of Ukraine, exactly what the Democrats are talking about. In fact, Nancy Pelosi said one of the grounds for an impeachment inquiry would be withholding information from Congress and the people. Well, the transcript has been released publicly. I and members of the Intelligence Committee have reviewed the whistleblower complaint. I believe it's probably going to be released publicly in the next few days. I, I don't see why it can't be with appropriate redactions for a few classified matters. And what's apparent is there's no quid pro quo that the president asked for anything in return for U.S. aid to Ukraine. It was a fairly straightforward diplomatic conversation. Um, certainly, it's not what Joe Biden has boasted about doing. Joe Biden boasted on television about withholding American aid to Ukraine if Ukraine didn't fire the prosecutor that was looking into his son's company. And let's just be clear here. A Ukrainian oligarch didn't find Hunter Biden's resume on ZipRecruiter.com and start paying him $50,000 a year because he's an expert in Ukraine and oil and gas. He did that because Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. Senator, uh, let me ask you a separate question. If you find the Joe Biden side of this troubling, 
which, by the way, I, I think is hard not to. Um, I, I, do you find anything about what the president did troubling? Not necessarily rising to a crime, not necessarily rising to a level of, uh, of being impeached, but uh, in terms of character, in terms of what it says, in terms of being uh, the president in the White House, does anything about this trouble you whatsoever at all, or do you think that this is completely fine? So first, I think the president has reasonable concerns about Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is riven by rival factions. Those factions point the fingers at each other a lot. One thing the president wanted to know earlier this year, whether President Zelensky, a newcomer to Ukrainian politics, was going to be better than some of the past leaders of Ukraine, especially when it came to combating corruption. Senator, I'm not referring and to that piece of the, the, the transcript. I'm referring specifically to the piece of the, uh, of the call related to, to Biden. No, this is my point, is that Joe Biden, as sitting vice president of the United States, went to Ukraine and demanded the firing of a prosecutor that was investigating his son's company. Otherwise, he was going to withhold a billion dollars in aid. He boasted about that. He bragged about that. That was under a previous Ukrainian administration. Now, with a new administration, the president wanted to, uh, wanted to get to the bottom of whether or not it was more trustworthy, it was going to take a more serious tack on corruption, and whether there were past actions that needed to be reopened. I, I'm not saying that there necessarily is anything there. I'm saying that these are reasonable questions when you look at the facts of a sitting vice president's son getting $50,000 a month. Senator. It's a, it's, a common, it's a common topic of conversation between our president and presidents of other nations yeah. when we're dealing with corruption and especially with aid to those nations. You're not going to get anywhere here, Andrew. Uh, Senator, um, the, the, uh, the whistleblower, you've seen it. So you've seen it. It's not public yet. So you've already seen it. I have. Okay. So the, at this point, what would it take to start flipping the, the 20? You'd need 20 Republicans, and I'm sure they're going to be pretty uh, solid in, in their support. I, I, I just, I don't know if, as they split up, maybe Sass, I don't know, maybe Romney, but, but what are the, what would you need to see where you'd actually, the president would start losing report, uh, the support of, of his colleagues in the Senate? Or not colleagues, but so the I, I don't want to get into any detail about the whistleblower complaint, although I do think it will be made public, and, and I don't think there's that much classified material in it, um, and I think it's probably best now that the transcript is public to make it public. Um, I, I will say I didn't see anything in the whistleblower okay. complaint beyond much of what's in the transcript that's been released publicly already and what's been reported in the news. And frankly, a lot of it touched on what's public news, not yep. classified, sensitive so material. You, you figure that voters will have a chance, the, the American public will have a chance to litigate this in November of 2020. <laughs> this and almost every other issue yeah, exactly. that we debate okay. all the time Tell in me, Washington. Let's talk about your, your ta the, the act of, of rebating some of the tariff money to, to taxpayers. Uh, uh, let's get to that. How does that work? Sure. So we've added uh, tariffs on various countries, various products over the last two years. Uh, the Treasury Department has taken in tens of billions of dollars. Those tariffs are primarily designed to get us better trade deals with those countries, to protect our jobs, and our farmers, our ranchers, our foresters. But there is that money in the Treasury Department now, and I think a good side effect of it could be turning that money back to American families. So my legislation would rebate that additional tariff money every immediately, uh, those past two years of money, and then every year uh, after taxes are filed, to the bottom three tax brackets, anyone making up to $84,000 a year or $164,000 for a family, by saying that to the, effect, to the extent that this has an impact on America's families, here's a rebate check of several hundred dollars so we can both try to use those tariffs to get better trade deals, but also not hit Americans in their pocketbooks. It's, it, it, it would only go to, the, to those in the, the lowest three uh, tax brackets, anybody who's in that, and it's not directly based on anything they're buying. You're just saying offering relief to families that inevitably would be paying higher bills if they get hit with some of these tariffs for the goods that they're paying in the stores? Yeah, that's right. So we want to uh, concentrate the uh, relief on working families who are in the bottom three tax brackets to the extent that they're going to face any kind of increasing uh, inflation pressures. We haven't seen that much in the data yet, but it's possible. But we want to use the money that's coming in from the tariffs to help give those working families some relief. What's Treasury doing with those, that money right now? And what's the administration well, say right, about right, that? You know, right now, tariff revenue, like income tax revenue or corporate tax revenue, just goes into the general Treasury uh, revenue funds. Um, but we do have the ability to create a separate tariff fund to identify how much money comes in on an annual basis and simply turn that money back to working families. That's several hundred bucks a year in the pockets of working families. I think that'll make a big difference. Has, has the administration signed off on this? Are they in favor of it, too? 
Uh, it's just being introduced today, but we've gotten some favorable indicators from the uh, administration already, uh, and I think that uh, we might have more senators joining us in the future and uh, have administration support behind it as well. Senator, great to have you on uh, today, and I uh, hope to see you again uh, not too long a time. It's been too long this time, but would love to have you back. Thank you. Thanks. Good to be on. Okay.